Okay, so this is going to be my review of Daydreamers. Now, Daydreamers was a three-issue miniseries that came that was kind of a spin-off from the 90s Generation X comics. Uh, what it is, is a comic that pretty much takes place right after the events of, on, of uh, the Onslaught saga in the 90s. The comic pretty much bases around a group of three, of like, a, a small group of heroes that you probably wouldn't know of. Uh, Franklin Richards... Uh, Artie and Leech, who are two, uh, two mutants, and Franklin, who was currently at the time after the death of the Fantastic Four, technical death, because they're in that pocket universe and all that, from Heroes Reborn, long story, but Franklin Richards, along with Artie and Leech, uh, and uh, a few other characters, such as uh, Howard the Duck and Man-Thing, and another co character called Tana Nile, who was a character from the early Thor comics, all of them, during an event where... Uh, Banshee's bro uh, brother, or cousin, yeah, stepbrother, I can't even remember his family lineage, yeah, it's brother. His brother, Black Tom, invaded Generation at the uh, Generation X facility, and they all escaped inside Man-Thing's uh, body, and ended up in a place called the Nexus of all realities. So the team is pretty much trying to find their way home, and it's pretty much the most madcap team ever. I mean, Howard the Duck, Man-Thing, <laughs> three... Franklin Richards, uh, Artie and Leech, and Tana Nile. Most characters that you wouldn't even know of. Uh, the only two characters I had really no any knowledge of was Franklin Richards, Howard the Duck, and uh, Man-Thing. But, <laughs> yeah, I was like, ooh, Howard the Duck and Man-Thing. That's why I'm going to get this comic for those two. And they do play a big part, especially Howard. Howard is probably the biggest character in here next to Franklin Richards, but he's kind of like the pseudo-leader of the team. He is... Kind of. He's there as the kind of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's kind of like the... The pseudo-leader of the group. And what happens is that the that uh, Howard and the group are kind of traveling through what they believe are all these different dimensions and realities as, you know, they're tumbling through time and space, as, or what they believe, while being hunted by this creature called the Dark Hunter. Yeah, not a big name, not an original name, I know, but whatever. This also comic was written, I should mention, by James Demantheus, who most of you guys will know who did a fantastic Spider-Man run, and was co-written by Tony Drazargo, who I don't know who did what he's done, but uh, James Demantheus, I was like hooked when I saw the word Demantheus, because I love Mason James Demantheus. Anywho, the comic pretty much takes off in the first, like, it takes off as a cool fantasy story, like, we see Marvel characters as fantasy characters, like, there's references to Wizard of Oz, Dr. Seuss, uh, so many crazy ideas, and there are some just really funny jokes in here, like, they meet uh, a version of Doctor Strange, who's Glenda the Good Witch, I'm not making that up, and he's like, I am strange, and Franklin re replies with, you sure are. <laughs> so, yeah, and also, like I said, I'm a, not many people may know this, but I really enjoy the character of Howard the Duck, and <laughs> he plays such a cool part in here, because he didn't want to be here. He doesn't want to be here, and he's he feels like, oh... And he does swear. And they blank it out, but he does swear, so... It does have this childish feel to it, but at the same time, there are jokes in here that are just like... Uh, like jokes that will go over people's heads in that way, and there are there is swearing in here. The main focus is Franklin Richards coming to grips with the events of After Onslaught. And, you know, he doesn't have a family anymore. So he's kind of, this kind of focuses on him, and there's this mystery that builds around him, and yeah, I'm going to spoil this much, is that it turns out that they were never in the at Nexus, it's just that Man-Thing's power merged with Franklin Richard's, you know, reality warping powers, and what happened next was pretty much that, uh, mixed with Man-Thing's empathic and teleportation powers, they actually delved into Franklin's mind, and it explains why there's so many freaky, you know, why there's a fantasy universe like Marvel, and why they end up in so many different places. They even think they end up on Duck World, when it turns out that Howard kind of pieces everything together. Sorry, I started there. But it's Howard who figures everything out. And, you know, he pretty much figures out that this is, we were never in a nexus, and the Dark Hunter is like the... Dark, the Dark Hunter is not the dark side of Franklin. He's not like the evil version. He's all of Franklin's... Uh, emotions that he's kind of buried down, like his grief and his anger. Like, it, basically, he's kind of... Franklin made himself an emotional wall after the events of Onslaught, and it created the Dark Hunter. And the, what the Dark Hunter is trying to do is that you subconsciously created me to stop you from doing this. So, 
yeah, I thought that was a really cool spin on it. I kind of figured out that, oh, it's... I really fi I figured out really quick that oh that's a, that's like a dark incarnation of Franklin Richards. It's, I was thinking oh it's the va it's Franklin Witch Richards Valyard when it turns out that he's nothing more than you know his sadness. That's his sadness incarnated, and what it was trying to do was trying to you know make Franklin you know come to terms with it rather than run away in a fantasy world and drag all these people into it. So I was kind of, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoy that the Dark Hunter, it's not really a villain, it's more like just trying to tell Franklin, look, you you can't run away from this, you, you know, you can't bury yourself in this fantasy world, you have to come to grips with this. And I like how they kind of, and also there's some cool fun things like Man-Thing is able to speak, um, Artie and Leech who, Artie and Leech, if you don't know what their powers, Artie is the, the purple character who can, you know, basically what he can do is transmit, he can't speak, but he can transmit his thoughts, um, into actual versions, you know, actual words and images that allows him to show them off. And Leech is pretty much a mutant that can disable other mutants' powers. So him and Leech are, him and Artie are very good friends. Tana Nile is an alien from this place called Regulus, and she's kind of she's kind of considered an outcast now. And she's kind of, she pretty much plays the den mother of the group. She pretty much her only concern is like I don't care what happens to me. All I care about is protecting the children. And Howard the Duck is just along for the ride, and it's funny. And Man Things there is the big muscle. It's so much. This comic book is so much fun because it's just a bunch of characters that most people would not even, you know, go around thinking about. And here they are having this adventure through all these fantasy worlds. There's some great jokes in here. There's some really good writing. The ending, which I thought, you know, I thought Jamantheus was having this fun reality hopping thing. When it turned out it was all Franklin's subconscious, I was like. Oh shit! I didn't. I didn't think about that. And that's how you know, Man Thing's able to speak and so much. I, I don't think this comic book is collected at all. I do not think this comic book is collected anywhere. And I found this in like a bo you know, a box of old '90s comics. And I was like, oh, okay, Howard the Duck and Man Thing. You you sold me enough. You have my money. So it was about. I got it all for three dollars. So I was like, what the hell? And I read through it. I had a lot of fun with it. And if you can ever find it. You know, give it a shot. I, I mean, the dialogue's really witty uh, sometimes. The, it's just really fun of how they poke fun at, you know, fairy tales like Wizard of Oz and, you know, Alice in Wonderland. The place they go to, you know, when they go to the fantasy world is called Never Ever uh, Narna Zumbia, which is an amalgamation of Neverland, Wonderland, Narnia, and Terra Biffia. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's really all I can say about this. If you can ever find Daydreamers, I'd suggest reading it. It's really fun.